هاي 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 ويلكم باك ويلكم باك من بايثون باي فاست اون لاين اند فيري ويلكم تو ايوا جورجوسكا سوري نو وريز اند اند لورينا ميزا هاو ار يو رايت ناو جريت كيو سوبر اكسايتد تو بي هير وان ايفن سايد يا That's great. That's great. Uh, so in this segment, we want to go ahead uh, to uh, and ask me anything <laughs> uh, session uh, where we will talk about the Python Software Foundation and uh, with both of you. Um, I'd like to ask you if you want to introduce yourself uh, in uh, your position right now in the Python Software Foundation. Sure. Lorena, go first. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. I'm not as cool, so. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> my name's Lorena Massa. My pronouns are she, her. I am the chairperson of the Python Software Foundation, at least until like tomorrow morning. Then we'll pick a new chair for the new board that gets voted in. And I am also a Pilot Chicago organizer, work at GitHub, love Python, stuff like that. I'll pass it now over to Eva. Sure. Uh, so my name is Eva Jadlowska, and I have had the pleasure of being the executive director of the Python Software Foundation for several years now, but I've been with the PSF for many, many more. Um, but this year, I'm actually transitioning out of the role, so soon the community will be meeting their new executive director. So I'm really excited to be here and help answer any questions that people might have about the PSF. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll go and dive in your own uh, express, uh, 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 experience uh, in the Python Foundation. Um, about exactly about uh, the Python Software Foundation, one question that uh, is uh, mostly asked is uh, what's your best memory? Uh, I know it's it always challenging to find the best one, <laughs> but uh, both in terms of events, community or projects, uh, what's the the best uh, that uh, or one of the memories uh, also more than one <laughs> that's really hard for that's me question to start right? <laughs> um i don't know that's hard to say lorena do you have any that come to mind i have so many i could list you like 10s and 20 and 30 different events that are memorable in my head <laughs> Um, I, if, about the foundation specifically or about like the Python community? I guess those are kind of two different. Two yeah, well, well, if you want to ask both, could be interesting. OK, I just made this question now bigger. I'm so sorry, Eva. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, OK, here's one I really like. Uh, so when I was first voted in as director, I think this was in 20, I forget if it was 2015 or 26, 2015, I believe, because I'll be, or 2016. I, I can't do time anymore. I apologize. Um, I am on my fifth out of six years, and then after this next year will be my last, and then I will pass my baton forward to someone else. But I remember when I first like learned I got voted in, it was at a member's lunch, and I felt like I was going to vomit, and this was when <laughs> Eva was talking, saying, you know, here's the new directors, and I had some of my, um, I'm based in Chicago, and I had some of my good friends with me, and I just remember like, kind of like looking around and I think Brett Cannon was at was at my table and was like, yeah, awesome. And like people were like giving me high fives. And it just, it was such a nice, it was such a nice thing. I actually, at that point in time, I'd only been an engineer by title for like two years. And I just remember feeling super imposter syndrome and just feeling like so overwhelmed. Um, and I, I remember that, that same members lunch, I had a conversation, with, maybe it was before or after, but with Guido and Guido's like, that's Eva. She, she, you, you're technically kind of like a boss to her as a director. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what did I sign up for? But I remember that was um, very quickly. That's actually how I began get, getting to hang out and getting to know Eva. It was just like a really nice day. And it was really nice to have the support of the community because we got that update in person at PyCon. So yeah, that was that was a fun one. So I'll stick with that one for the foundation and I'll oh. pass now over to you, Eva. That's lovely that one of the memory uh, is uh, meeting each other. <laughs> I loved it. I had fun. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, for me, I would say that every PyCon has been memorable, especially since we've always, at least the PSF staff has worked, you know, remotely, kind of distributed all over the U.S. So PyCon was that one time of year that we'd all get together um, and, and work together on, on the biggest project that we've been working on. So it's hard to pick out one PyCon, but of course, 2019 um, stands out the most right now just because it's the most recent in-person one that we've had. Nice, very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We hope to to go back soon, right? Absolutely. Like connect anyway, because these kind of online events make us connect all over the world all together and uh, spend a little bit less in traveling. <laughs> 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 so we started with a very deep, very positive uh, step. One uh, other uh, interesting question that I'd be ask is. Uh, Right now, in the other side, what's the biggest problems or uh, troubling things that could happen in um, Python Software Foundation or something that uh, is challenging and uh, is moving forward and need uh, more energy to be focused on right now? We two questions, different moods. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Well, I mean, one of the things that we're like currently, like today experiencing is, um, for example, our elections for the upcoming directors. Mm -hmm. um, that is ending, uh, I believe, June 17th, um, AOE. So there is still a little bit of time, but we ask anyone that has um, the ability to vote, the eligibility to vote, um, they should have a ballot in their inbox from Helios to actually vote because one of the things that we're faced against right now is meeting quorum for that vote, mm -hmm. which requires us to have at least one third of the membership vote in it. And there is an exceptional lineup of nominees for the upcoming seats. So it, 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 we need to get this done. It, we want to see these people come in and do all the great things that they're going to do to help the PSF move forward. Oh, that's interesting. What's the, if I may ask, um, um, an average uh, number um, of the amount of members and the quorum needed just to have a, don't want to put in the spot, just to, if you had in mind. Yeah, that's a great question. So I believe we have around 1,500 voting members, and we need about a third of those to vote. Um, so we're very close to it. Um, I think we're like literally 50 votes away. So anyone that hasn't voted yet, please do. And if you can't find your ballot and you think you should have your ballot, please let me know. You can email me anytime. Um, my email is fairly short, ewa at python.org. Well, very easy to remember. So please <laughs> vote and reach out if you didn't receive the ballot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Logana, if you want to add uh, also something about uh, this. Yeah, I think, well, uh, actually this goes hand in hand with the election, which again, continuing to make sure that we're building up uh, the mission of the Python Software <coughs> Foundation is the mission of the Python Software Foundation is not only to oversee Python and its trademarks, and to invest and maintain the infrastructure that is that supports the awesome programming language we love, but it's also to over to continue to oversee the growth of a diverse and friendly and awesome Python open source community. And part of that is done by us actually continuing to make sure that we are meeting our community where they're at. So I would say that getting folks to register to be members so that they can learn more about the Python Software Foundation and actually exercise their, their own powers to help, for example, pick the new directors that come in. Um, many, many people continue to say, you know, I haven't actually, like I've heard a little of what the Python Software Foundation is. I don't exactly know what it is. And so that that's always a challenge for us is to con is continue to make sure that we're doing that education and telling people about the awesome work that the, the, the Python Software Foundation does. We have this amazing staff that Eva has led over the last 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you so much, Eva, you're amazing. We we hurt you, <laughs> um, but you know, and we have a, we have fantastic staff that do amazing things. Like, for example, uh, some of the work that we've seen with uh, the sponsorships overhaul with running PyCon, because obviously PyCon, uh, the big one that happens in the United States, is huge for us. Um, but then we do other things, like we have a fantastic grants program. We are continuously doing things like making sure that there is uh, places for 
the, for any trademark questions, if you need to talk, to, if you need to understand kind of like issues related to trademark, um, we have a lot of kind of special interest groups in the Python Software Foundation that are volunteer run. Um, you know, the Python Software Foundation is the glue that that binds our community together. So making sure that we get people that are in the community to register to help us not only know what they care about, but also to help support the mandate of the mission is super important. And that actually then leads me to a very more uh, a, a very specific thing that I'm very passionate about, which is again the continued di uh, diversify, uh, continuing to diversify who are the directors. Uh, we've had obviously really amazing people. This is a volunteer role. Um, We've had amazing people from around the world, but I think it behooves us to continue to have uh, directors that are from outside of, let's say, like West Europe and outside of the United States and Canada. We have booming numbers in Latin America and Africa, APAC, uh, the, the annual report that the Python Software Foundation does in tandem with JetBrains, for example, to show some demographics about that. Um, I know Eva does a really fantastic end of year report looking at, for example, like our numbers for our events that we support through a grants program and the growth outside of these areas is huge. So, you know, I continue to challenge people to say, you know, I, when I put my name for it again, like two years and I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe someone will vote me in. And, you know, five years later, I now am like this person with this, really cool sounding title called chairperson. And I just joke, it's me sitting in a very large ceremonial chair, but anyone can anyone can do this. And the voices of those, um, you'd particularly from folks that are not in the areas that have good representation, we, we really benefit from having the global perspective in the board of directors. So awareness, getting folks activated and engaged. Those are always, I think, going to be challenges for us, but those are luckily things that I think all of us are passionate about and we can continue to work on. Great, great. Thank you very much. I totally agree that diversity in leadership and representation uh, is very much needed in all across the sector, to be honest, uh, because it's bring more energy, more idea as well, and uh, great representation. Um, there is a question that is very aligned to this, uh, and uh, is uh, how to encourage uh, encourage women or minority to get in participation in touch. So, for people that uh, are not yet inside the Python community, inside the touch community, so able to be represented, um, do you know if you're aware, or you would suggest to run some project about that. Uh, if you want to expand more on that, or also give suggestion to local communities in order to activate that. Lorena, I'm going to leave that to you because I think Pi Ladies is the key response there. All yeah. right. <laughs> Pi Ladies, period. My drop of <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, well, Pi Ladies uh, is Women and one. diversity in general, right? So, right, right, right. Uh, had, yeah. Uh, uh, that's a great question. Um, so, thinking about explicitly projects that the Python Software Foundation um, kind of oversees, uh, Pi Ladies is actually something that is under the umbrella of the Python Software Foundation. Um, I would encourage anyone, um, when we think of Pi Ladies, we think of it as a space for marginalized genders. So folks that are of a gender expression that is underrepresented in technology, it's a community for folks to come learn. We have a, uh, we have been spending a lot of time rebranding how Pi Ladies is run and explicitly thinking about how to run Pi Ladies as an open source project. It will be the hill I die on that we are going to get a dashboard with really good like metrics that we say this this is our metrics and this is our source of truth that we want to follow. Um, it's been a conversation that some folks, for example, uh, Reshima, who is an organizer of Pi Ladies New York, has written some interesting. Uh, kind of updates around leadership numbers, uh, you know, even in thinking about being a contributor or a maintainer to Python projects, where just looking at gender and gender is obviously only one flavor of diversity, but how do we kind of start saying like where we're at, and where we want to go? Um, so I think Pilates is a really great example, but of course there's many folks that are doing this work. I mean, if you look at if you look at, uh, for example, any of like the larger conferences, there are really great programs to help support folks where they're at. And user groups, I think, are a fantastic way to get started. I remember that I got involved with the Chicago Python user group, which is a very active user group. But I, when I, my past life, when I was working on Obama for America, his presidential campaign, and I was told I had to do like all this customs analytics. And I'm like, I, what, what is going on? 
I had the math and I had the SQL, but I didn't necessarily have a lot of the data chops that I needed in a programming language. So I went to a user group. Um, you may not have a you may not have a user group in your immediate area, but I will say the Python Software Foundation does cover, for example, meetup fees. And I I believe there's I don't remember the number of meetup groups that are in the Python Software Foundation meetup network, but I know that there's quite a few. So if you're curious, you can go check that out on meetup. And honestly, there's the mailing lists. You know, I think even just kind of stepping into like. PSF community or PSF uh, or uh, Python ideas or just taking some time to find open source projects that may be of interest to you. There's likely going to be a good, uh, there might, for example, if you go to Pilates, there's like how to be a contributor and there's a discussion there. I know Core Python does that as well. And honestly, at the end of the day, um, thinking kind of outside of the Python space, I have found that even just on, if you're comfortable with social media, asking questions in places, you know, right. I, I asked a question about a project and I got, uh, I got, uh, I got an answer back from the author of that project and was like totally blown away. <laughs> but I, I would say let's use one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite people, for example, Mariana, right? Uh, the, the first woman core developer for Python and who's done really, I think, good work kind of showcasing that there's many pathways to being a core developer. It's not that you have to be super savvy in C, for example, you can work on like automation and continuous integration and development kind of work. Um, the idea of like what it means to kind of get involved in tech. Tech is such a large umbrella. Yeah. So I think, I think learning about different pathways is a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just said I, I was a political scientist and I switched into being an engineer. So, I, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of really cool places you can go learn and read a little bit more, even if that's the, if even just learning a little more, I think is a great way. Um, I'm going to plug this project that's that GitHub runs called the README Project, where they highlight different folks in open source and sure. talk about their journeys. I think that's really an interesting one. Um, and then the there's a great publication that's called People of Color in Tech, which I think these are English these are English specific. So if there are folks looking for resources in other languages. Uh, my email is also short. It's Lorena, L-O-R-E-N-A, not as short as Eva's, at python.org. And I probably have a list with something that I can send you. So, you know, asking those questions, and even if it's just like asking on social media, you'd be amazed how quickly people will respond. So there's like many paths. And just to add to that, I think there are two very valuable communication um, platforms within our community. One is a PSF um, kind of space, and it's the discourse that we have, um, which is at discuss.python.org. Another one that is not you know, specifically a PSF official channel, it is a great resource for a lot of folks. I think it's the Python Discord. Um, not only do uh, they do a great job with engaging people at all levels, they do a lot of activities, um, obviously asynchronously, asynchronously and remotely, um, but they also do a great job of staying on top of like code of conduct and enforcement and it, it's a welcoming space for a lot of people. Yeah, that, that's super important, both the inspiring story and uh, be welcome when a person do the first step, whatever is the background, because uh, if this feeling of feeling welcome is uh, the courage to, to take uh, the second step and then uh, join the community and perhaps a local community. That's exactly. Great. Thank you very much for... Uh, you want to uh, add something? Uh, I was going to say, my, yeah. um, and as a shameless plug for our grants program, you can go and start your own community and do your own workshops. And then if it's thinking. Python <laughs> and doing things with Python, uh, you can then go check out the Python Software Foundation's grant program. Because let's be real, there's a lot of, like maybe you're like, I'm really focused on you know high frequency trading and I work in finance and like I want to do that kind of thing. Maybe there's not a group and you want to go start it. So again, shameless plug for the fact that the foundation is here not only to take care of the language and the infrastructure and the trademark, but also to vanguard and grow the community. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And uh, this is very connected with another question about taking care of the community is uh, how much is taking care of the core developers and maintainers of, of projects as, as well. So one question was, uh, how about the sponsorship and the grant where it's possible uh, to sponsor an open source project that perhaps uh, are taking some leverage and uh, how um, how can a person can reach that fund, which are the criteria? If you want to expand a little bit on that, on the touch side of an open source project that uh, want to be maintained in the long term, but uh, uh, with some funding to be... 
doable? So I think there's two ways. Well, first, I mean, just to touch on CPython, one of the new initiatives that the PSF is taking on this year, and that is thanks to a sponsorship that we received from Google, is hiring a developer in residence, which will probably happen in the next few weeks. But this is the first time the PSF has ever done anything, and that's mainly to support um, CPython um, volunteer maintainers. Um, but in general, in terms of the kind of support that the PSF can provide for, you know, third party projects that are out there, I think that's, you know, there, there are so many ways that the can can happen but one of the main things that we're trying to grow is our fiscal sponsorship program um, so the fiscal sponsorship program is a way that un unincorporated groups can join under the PSF umbrella and receive donations and we can help promote their donation pages as well um, just because we know that you know maintaining such great projects you know takes money sometimes people can't you know do that on their free time especially when their projects begin to grow I think you know um, pallets which maintains flask is a great example of that right it's it's a very large project that now um, needs paid development time to to be able to sustain and I think a lot of a lot of um, a lot of projects are at that growth growth point. So hopefully the PSF will continue to grow. Um, it does take internal internal resources to make that happen because we provide a lot of the accounting, a lot of the um, back office admin tasks to support that. Great. And to, to reach this this grants uh, again directly from the website, do you have a, a particular um, fast track to to encourage people to? To be aware of that. Um, so there is actually one page that I created on python.org that has like 30 different kind of links that will tell people how to get involved um, or just to even you know learn about the different kind of programs we have. So it's python.org slash PSF slash get involved. Um, and I can provide the link so we can post it at a later time. But it pretty much talks about ways that people can keep in touch with our blog, our newsletter, how to become fiscal sponsors, how to um, also learn about the grants program. That's super. That's super. And uh, someone asked a very kind question as uh, we are all, you know, when you are in the open source uh, um, ecosystem, you are, have this sort of altruism, being a volunteer. And uh, someone asked, how can I help? Uh, PSF. <laughs> That's it. I mean, so there are varieties for a variety of ways. I think it can stem from anything as like telling others about Python and the PSF to creating your own user group in your region and helping organize events um, to, you know, joining a work group that the PSF runs. Um, so there's a, there's a variety of ways that people can get involved. Lorena, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I think another way too is, you know, if you if you, if the world feels vast, your directors are here actually kind of to talk to you a little bit maybe about your interests. So I should know this. It's PSF at python.org. You can email and that will go to the directors. So for example, if it's like, hey, maybe let's use an example that Python's used a lot in education. Maybe you're very passionate and have an idea of like some type of resources you would like to help curate or maybe some challenges you have with Python in education. That, you know, again, we're voted in by the community to kind of help meet the community where, and advocate on behalf of the community to think about initiatives and things that ought to be becoming initiatives that the PSF takes on. So we're around in many places. I apologize, I have a kitten. His name is Walter Mercato. He's very little, you might hear him in the background. Um, very, very needy. But uh, but yeah, I think talking with your directors is, is one option. Um, another, another thing that you might consider is also the PSF, and Eva mentioned this, but the PSF newsletter, I think is a fantastic resource of just kind of some of the bullet points yeah. that you can look at. Um, and then as well, you know, if you are attending, if you're already here at PyFest, which is a fantastic event, I love this very much. Um, you know, folks, that, uh, uh, other alumni, obviously, in this conference, in this virtual moment, are going are also passionate about Python. So it's amazing. Sometimes the that's the thing I miss about like the in person is like those sideway tracks. You know, you're having that conversation, and then you realize that yeah. like that person used to work with like two jobs ago, and you're like you have like the exact same interest, and you're kind you're of working the same thing. So it, it's just um, I would say don't try to overthink it and. 
think you have to come up with some like grandiose subject or topic. There's generally, uh, if you have some thoughts and some inklings of things you might want to get involved in, just striking up conversations with folks in the community, be it if it's director, if it's organizers of an event you're going to, if it's participating in the discourse and saying, you know, these are areas of interest I have. Those are all really great ways to get started. So, some points, thank you very much. Some point that uh, is aligned with that is uh, someone asked about uh, translation. So as uh, you know, in the word English, the main language also for coding, uh, Spanish is very wide. Uh, um uh, used uh, but locally of course uh, every country has its own language how did you support that how do you feel is the best process or i don't know organized team to volunteer for that or how uh, the uh, the foundation itself take place to encourage that <laughs> yeah i have the camera that point in another direction but i <laughs> what you want. i take it you're pointing to me <laughs> so, <Okay. yes. laughs> um so there are so there is a translation work group which lorena is actually a part of if, if i'm guessing that correctly but so there are you know there are a lot of people that are interested and many people that are working actively on translations especially when it comes to like docs.python.org um there is, so one other work group that the PSF recently started was the diversity and inclusion work group which has been an incredible effort but I know that um for example from the PyCon standpoint they recently discussed how can you know they they contribute to help ensure that also the PyCon website Website, the PyCon US website is is translated if if necessary because you know even though it is a PyCon US where, where efforts can be um, put into action. Yeah, great. Uh, there is a peculiar per, uh, question that uh, I'll I'll ask. Uh, could be quite open to interpretation, I guess. Is uh, um, what do you think uh, uh, the PSF the foundation? Uh, could address a uh, topic that are not directly in their field of action. So I think this could be addressed to uh, actuality and uh, problems in the news, uh, perhaps uh, both um, could be diversity, could be any kind of other problems that is really worldwide uh, impacting uh, uh, at this moment. I think this interpretation of, uh, uh, so um, perhaps I think is uh, how, um, manage to be politically correct uh, in uh, address some issues that are not directly in the foundation? I think one way we can look at this is always by thinking about, I feel that the Python community, um, and obviously the Python Software Foundation is a direct reflection of this, it kind of follows what I call the campsite rule, leave the community in a better shape than, than when you arrived. And part of this, I think, has been really evidenced by the fact about how do we continue to create and make a welcoming community. Um, we are not a political organization. And at the same time, though, we do have strong values about how people ought to be uh, treated. And we have strong opinions about how then that manifests into the way we build community and the way then we do the work that's within the community. And I think that can be evidenced, for example, by our code of conduct. That was a really big undertaking. And Eva, I don't know if you maybe want to talk a little bit about some of that work, um, some of the stuff that was taken as the historical, like why that, that revamp. But our code of conduct is one that I think is a really, really good example of how uh, maybe people have heard of this project called the Contributor Covenant Project, which is started by um, a colleague of mine, uh, uh, named Ada, in, also here in the Chicagoland area, has done a lot of work in Ruby. Um, but you know, when you think about, for example, going to events and, you go, and going to like space, going to conferences, let's say, or going to uh, contribute to projects that are in a given language, and then you have that really toxic experience, that's going to, I think, turn you off to participating in that community. So I think code of conducts are really, um, not only do they staple down our core values, but also then it becomes something that that's actually actionable and then we can hold ourselves accountable. So I, so for me, that's like a really clear way in which while the, the Python Software Foundation is registered as a nonprofit in the United States and unfortunately there's legalities about, you know, we can't go like fundraise money for politics, like political initiatives and things like that. We can though be the good example and again kind of follow that campsite rule of making the of leaving things better in, than how they were when we arrived and the code of conduct work i think is a really good example of that yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I can I can tell you that uh, actually for uh, a national event, we took inspiration for the Python uh, code of contact uh, to, write, <laughs> to write one. So definitely uh, a great word. And uh, I think there's great effort in, in making sure that there is uh, omnicomprehensive of the environment. Thank you very much. Um, some questions are regarding uh, the role of Python Foundation itself, uh, uh, also relating to the national communities. Uh, if you wanted to expand uh, a little bit more about that. Oh my The cat is saying hi. Oh. Hi. It's <laughs> a so Pythonista as well, I guess. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> Pythonista and making, I am no doubt. Um, so I, one of the ways that I think, you know, just to make sure that I caught your question, but your yeah. the question is, um, you know, what is the PSF's role in the global community? Global, yeah, yeah, global community in terms of connection with the national communities. Yeah, so I think that, you know, probably Lorena as a board director can also add to this, but that's one of the discussions that the board has been has been taken and, and it has many layers just like an onion would. And one of the things that, you know, they're hoping th through the diversity on the board is that we can also um, better represent the needs of the regional Python groups all around the world. Um, because sometimes, you know, we only, we only know what we hear and sometimes we're not hearing from the people that we need to be hearing. Um, so I do know that there will be some bylaw changes that are, uh, will be happening shortly. Um, once a vote goes through, but after that, once a new board is in place starting in, in June, those, those discussions will continue to see what kind of things we can put in place at the PSF board level that will help us achieve those goals sooner than later. Yeah, and I think to that point, um, thank you, Eva, for highlighting that conversation. We actually, so this does, I think, so speaking as an individual, taking my director hat off, um, I have very specific values that I'm very passionate about. And I think given the year of isolation that we've, well, the, the longer than a year of isolation we've had, really put into perspective how much I do value, um, I value meaningful community. I value, um, I am a first generation um, Latinx person. So my family comes from Latin America. I, I have strong connections with, uh, with my identity. And for me thinking about, you know, people that I do a lot of, some of the communities I do a lot of work with, like Python in Latin America, um, I continue to want to see more folks that are coming from these, from around the world. Um, the reason I say that I'm speaking as an individual is, you know, the work I may do as an individual might, while it, it can dovetail, I think, with the work that the Python Software Foundation has, I do want to be um, intentional in saying that, um, you know, what is really interesting, I think, as Eva was saying about how this work is complex is, while my values may be, oh, hey, we should have, uh, as an example, maybe I would say, I think the PSF is going to be like the representative for the community, for like the global perspective. Someone else, I would argue, can make a very meaningful argument saying that, well, actually, would it maybe make more sense to have uh, like maybe like the like the, like Euro Python having more kind of groups that have regional focus, and this is actually something that is very like that is a big discussion for us to think about is how do we meaningfully engage our community with meaningful initiatives while also still taking care of the other parts of the Python Software Foundation mandate, which includes of again continuing to maintain and protect the programming language. Since, since that is obviously very important since that's what our community is based around. So I think, the, I think the discussion around what the Python Software Foundation is, even in my time as a director, I have seen a lot of shift. And that is very big, that is, that is influenced obviously a lot by the board of directors. And obviously the board of directors are a, we come from the community, we know the community. So I think that discussion around what does the Python Software Foundation mean in the global perspective, is one that we are thinking very critically about, is one that is going to be a dynamic and continuously, I think, changing kind of perspective. And I think as we find meaningful ways to contribute in the global perspective, then we'll either run with those or maybe we, we retool and we reiterate. I think it's really interesting, for example, saying like, you know, in other programming languages like Rust, for example, you know, the Rust Software Foundation, yeah. We have a really, really good community governance model. You know, if we look at how core Python is ran, if we look at how 
the open source community from the perspective of the Python open source is, is ran. We have very strong servant leadership in our community. So I, I think that the work that we do, I think actually really influences a lot of other, a lot of other uh, projects, a lot of other communities. I, I always told like by people in other communities are like, that's so cool that you all have that. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, we're, there's a lot of learning along the way. And I am so thankful for folks like Eva who've been with us on this journey for 10 years, <laughs> because as we're thinking through it, you know, there's a lot to be said about, I think the diversity and inclusion work group is a really, really great conduit to help us think about doing this work meaningfully on a global stage. Because again, what I may presume is correct may not indeed be correct. Um, how do we empower the actual people that know their community and can have the meaningful way of, of bringing the Python open source community to, if it's a country, if it's a region, maybe it's even a city, you know, sometimes we have different layers that we need to think about. Um, this is, I think we're in, I think we've, done a lot of really good things, but I still would argue we're kind of in the early days of some of this. And this will definitely be a conversation that's not going away. And I think will be really significant in the immediate moments, as well as like the next five to 10 years, I think will be really significant. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you very much. And uh, is, is exactly in the direction that uh, I would like to ask you, because uh, we touched different points uh, uh, in this interview. Uh, thank you both for the amazing inputs and uh, also very informative uh, uh, as well. Um, how do you see the, the mission for the future? We already touched some points, but perhaps uh, the mission uh, that it evolves in times as well. Uh, what are the priorities uh, right now in terms of uh, connected to the mission and values uh, that stand uh, I think one of, at least for me, as the executive director, one of the important um, aspects of the PSF, and I think one of its most important role in the community is to make sure that we have the structures in place to support volunteer work, um, especially like as we were just talking about the topic of, you know, making sure we're globally represented. For example, if the PSF does decide to be that global representative, you know, how do we empower the volunteers wanting that work to happen to have that move at a faster pace? And, and sometimes volunteerism is, is a great starting point. But again, you know, people only have so much time in the day. Um, and we, of course, don't want community members burning out. Those are things that we, we hope that through funding and sponsorship and donations that we can help put in place to support all of these wonderful things that the community um, would like to see the PSF evolve into. Yeah. Plus, oh, no, you're, you're fine. No, no, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Um, a huge plus one on that, Eva. I think, you know, we come open source, unfortunately, is synonymous with free labor. And not everyone is in the place where they can take that free labor on. It's thinking about it, you know, not even just as a director, but just as someone who's passionate and thinking about opportunity for people. I think that I think that again we're so thankful for the volunteers who come in and do this work. But if we can do it in a way where, for example, like if it's hiring an an, uh, a, an in residence uh, core Python developer to help make sure that like our uh, that core developers aren't all burning out and that there's good initiatives and investments happening, the idea I think of for the future for the future of the Python Software Foundation is going to not only look at kind of volunteerism, but I think we're, we're very uniquely positioned to think about open source. There's so much to be said around open source. You know, we don't have yet, um, as an individual I'm speaking and saying, I don't see, I, I think we have more investment, a significant amount of investment that needs to continue to happen in open source. You can think about it from the human component of saying there's burnout and the fact that some of the for lack of a better phrase, changing of the old guard may be happening in some projects. What happens when you lose those people? For example, when Guido was saying, I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to move on, there was a lot that had to go into place in order for that transition to happen. And so many people depend on Python. I mean, Python was literally used to help take an image of a black hole. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> but you know, when you think about when you think about the true impact of open source, it is these foundations that are having that conversation and need to continue to be the advocate of saying why open source is important, why investment needs to happen. Um, not only the human component of like the volunteers, but also the people who depend on the technology that Python, for example, helps power in the world. And, you know, in a world that's ever more being automated, ever more interconnected, we, that goes hand in hand also with, with the continued need to 
make sure that the, te the technology that we're building is safe and secure. There's a lot happening in the United States. For example, President uh, Biden issued a, a executive order saying that uh, there needs to be now an ability to audit and understand all the build and materials that goes into building um, that goes into building software. So understanding supply chain hacks, like for example, there's been some really prominent ones that have been talked about and folks like Google, I mean, my employer GitHub thinks about this. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are paying attention to these things. So I think the Python Software Foundation is gonna continue to become a more critical partner and, and expert in that discussion. And that then also just goes to then the very, like to me, which is like the huge thing that I really care about, which is, our technology is only as good as it is by the people who write it. And I think Python is such a cool, open, friendly, awesome place to be. It's intuitive, it's easy to read, it plays really well in other ecosystems. I mean, I always think of Jake Vonderplas, his 2017 keynote when he had like that big like pie chart or that big graphic being like, Python's in all the scientific spaces. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I mean, we're, it's like Python is, again, we talk about these as programming languages, right? It's a language in order to express and how to do things. And this language is highly powerful. So I wanna be, I wanna see, I wanna see more women. I wanna see more people of color. I wanna see people from more, out, uh, I wanna see more folks from outside the, uh, of the United States and Western Europe. I wanna see more language representation. So like for me, more, more, more. <laughs> name of the game. And so, you know, the, again, there's just, I think all those things kind of come together uh, with saying that the, the Python Software Foundation is super unique and it is super, to me, a standout in the space of thinking about leadership and open source. And we, we really take care of our people and we do cool stuff. Python is just cool. So all those things, you know, all those things I think go into the future of what the Python Software Foundation is. And I imagine we're gonna be seeing some really cool updates coming from the foundation as these conversations continue to progress. That's great. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I've been exposed uh, daily to students and industries, uh, both for commercial and private, and, and it's needed everywhere. <laughs> we just have a talk in the health sector, digitalization, uh, Really, Python is a cross-platform, cross, cross, cross everything. <laughs> uh, so thank you, thank you very much for your time. We have a, one last question for very, very last word I have to say to explain uh, um, Python Software Foundation uh, in one word. <laughs> I would say one community. Word, is community is my one word. <laughs> Sorry? Community. Community. I, I like that one. I'm going to say us. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. I, sorry, I kind of, kind of jumped in on Eva's awesome, positive expression. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ewa and uh, Ewa and uh, Lorena, uh, for your time. Uh, we get your contact now, <laughs> the shorter and the longer version. <laughs> so, Thank you so much. Uh, hope to expose all all the different projects uh, and grants that they're offering the Python Foundation. And uh, we hope to reach out for the next collab collaborating in the future as well. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for Anna. having us. Thank you. Thank you for Bye -bye. your time. And thank you all for the question as well. Great. Uh, now I'll, I'll, I'll pass the stage to Balagio Maggio here, here, there, there. <laughs> Okay, I think you're in mute. I can't hear her now. Let me know if you hear Valagio. Uh, we're in a few seconds. As soon as Valagio got the voice, we're going to the pub quiz, the Python quiz. Hope you're ready. Okay, just one second. Okay, yeah, from the, we're, we're giving voice to, to well, like, well, it, it's been a very, very great day that we're going to finish uh, big with the quits. So I hope you're ready. Right now we can't uh, just stay in there and, uh, and listen, but this time uh, it's time to, 
to do something, to answer some question. And this is the suspense, you know, when you, uh, when you want to reach the end, there is this uh, suspense moment uh, that you want to, actually probably you want to integrate all the notion from the previous interview and then uh, go ahead uh, uh, with the quiz. I hope you are engaging. I'm perhaps uh, if not now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I hear something. So I think it just okay. Still on air or we're break. We'll be back in a second. Siamo quasi. Ok, so um, thank you so much for listening until here. I uh, right now we're going to share the stage with uh, Valeria Gimaggio that will soon introduce himself and I'm going to say goodbye for now and uh, see you tomorrow in Discord. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so very much Stefania. That was that was amazing. Um host um so thank you so very much for being here and and uh, and and uh to be with us to the very last event of the day this is going to be the pub quiz um it's it's, it's going to be very exciting i know and um as a clue i have no idea at all about the quiz and and the questions and and, and so the answers so i will play with you sort of um what's the deal with the quiz the deal is uh, the deal is um so you, you will you will soon um get the links to play the game with us uh, it's going to be shared on discord and um, you'll see the questions uh, then the answers of course and and you will receive um points as soon as you get correct answer and and in as soon as you you register to the uh to the to the web uh app uh specifically designed for the for the game you'll see the ranking live so you'll see how you're ranking uh in the score why you should play with this game uh first off it's, it's fun it's going to be fun and it's going to be really fun time together and the second and very important reason is that the best three players of the quiz uh, will win a ticket for Pike in Italian 2022. Uh, so 2022. Uh, and uh, drums, uh, date will be announced in the very end day of Pi Fest. So I believe this is a very good reason to play and also uh, to test your knowledge of, of Python. It's going to be about Python, it's going to be about programming a little bit, it's going to be about uh, Python knowledge in, 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 in general. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to be fun. Um, so I guess that um, the um, we, we, we're ready to ready to start. Um, links have, has been shared uh, in in uh, um, in Discord. Uh, it, it, by the way, if you if you haven't uh, can join Discord, um, a, a link will be will be popped into into the chat. Um, we're keeping, uh, we're trying using Discord this time. Um, it's going to be, 
well, let's put it this way. It's going to be a, a test for um, next year pub quiz. Uh, but, but fingers crossed that this is going to be live uh, and, and, and in person when we would pr presumably get the chance to get together again and have fun as we used to. Um, OK, so. Um, um, yes, um, I think I'm ready. I'm ready to start. So um, do, do we have do we have already players? Registered. We have 12 players. Come on, guys. Come on, folks. You can play. It's going to be fun. Right. So let's start with the game then. So give these definitions. Uh, given these definitions, A equals to 255, uh, B equals to 255, C 257, D 257. Which of these statements returns false? This is a tricky one. Hmm. Oh, look very carefully. This is nice. I'm not sure whether I should, I should, I should say jokes and in the meantime. <laughs> I could say jokes. Um, I, w I was wondering if sharing um, some of the best jokes in Monty Python, but you actually have to, you actually have to um, have seen it um, to, to probably understand it really. And well, Monty Python is lost fun. Okay, so if you if you answered B, that was the 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 exact the exact answer. Okay, that was a tricky one though. Yeah, it's about object allocation, and um, am I supposed to say the notes? By the way, so should I give an explanation of the of the questions? Okay. No, sorry. Um, um, for those of you who are watching live, it, it, it seems like I'm talking to myself. I'm actually talking to <laughs> I'm talking to Patrick in the back end. Uh, uh, sorry, that was weird to, to watch, I guess. Um, so the trick here is that there's a difference between the the ease operator and the double equal operator. So the equality operator ease in, is indeed an operator that checks if both the operands refer to the same object, and that's that's the trick. Uh, whereas uh, the the equality operator is is for reference equality, and, and so um, the, the trick there was that um, um, two hundred and and, and uh, fifty six is an existing object, but two hundred fifty seven is not. So that's why you get um, uh, you get C as a wrong answer. Okay, I guess we can we can move along to to the next question. Right. So, oh, that's nice. So the inspiration of the Python logo comes from, and this, this is a, a question asked by Charles. Is it the plus sign? Is it the uh, Mayan symbology? Is it the show Monty Python's Flying Circus? Or is Van Rossum College team? What do you think is the inspirational for the language? I'm not going to say any hints. Don't try that. I'm sure there will be people chat putting in the chat requests. Think about it is 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 well, you can make an educated guess. I think time is over. And so yes, so let, let's show the, the correct answer. It's gonna be C, I'm pretty sure. Nice, brilliant. That's nice. So, oh, by the way, remember, I, I have no idea of questions and uh, and the answers. So I can try to play the game as well. And the the thing is, I, I won't uh, win anything uh, apart from a, a a a very, you know, not like this is this is this will harm my reputation. Um, yes, of course, yes. This is the Monty Python's flying circus. Actually, of uh, the very name of the language comes from Monty Python too. So that was kind of expected. Yes, let's go to the next one then. So far, so good. 
How are you doing with the questions? I hope you're doing fine. Okay, oh, brilliant. Uh, this is another question. Uh, is is a is a, is a tricky one, I guess. Looking at it, uh, this is asked. This has been asked by uh, Pameron, uh, or uh, AKA Ernesto, for for, and he he will be doing a live coding session tomorrow. Uh, uh, together with Alessia, join in. That's going to be fun. Uh, what's the attribute of the following code snippet? Uh, so it is a lambda function returning x print a function of two. So syntax error two, zero, or four. Oh, that's a tricky one. I guess the the, the oh that's nice. I I won't I won't I won't I won't spoil anything. Brilliant. Okay, time to that. Uh, shall we? Shall we? Well, let, let me just guess. I guess it's going to be syntax error. Let's try to show the. Let's try to show. Yes, I was right. Yes, of course you cannot write anything like that in the lambda function, and most importantly, you cannot have a return uh, statement. I guess that's the that's the tricky one uh, into into a lambda function. Brilliant. Okay. That was that was nice. Uh, shall we move along? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, which of these is not a tuple? Um, okay. So I, I won't explain those. It's like you have to look at it. Um, I have I have my answer. Uh, but remember, it's not a tuple. This is going to be interesting. Interesting answer. Well, in the meantime, uh, I didn't say what what I'm actually wearing. Um, I am uh, currently a researcher, at University of Bristol, and uh, I'm wearing the lanyard of University of Bristol here, mostly because this is this is magnificent. I, I really like it. It's the very first lanyard I got from work, which has uh, the color of inclusiveness and diversity. Uh, it, in all fairness, you can actually pick one. You can actually get this colorful lineage or you can get the black boring one uh, I, I i decided to go for the for the colorful one is really nice in my opinion and it, it it is a very good sign for for a um for a community to and for people looking at lots of people going around the campus and 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 it very in line with the with the spirit of the python community too okay um next question for the for the next lady that i'm wearing uh, yes, of course, it's a C, the wrong one, because it's the it's the only one possible. You cannot interpret a minus two as a tuple, and and the the only tricky one here is is the uh, well. To be fair, D B could have been an option, and uh, if you answered B, uh, I I I know I know where you struggled, uh, because tuple is actually a capital letter, but you can have it from the typing, I guess. In in uh, in other words, uh, whatever you put a comma in the end, Python will will interpret it as a um, as a um, as a tuple. Nice. Okay, let's move along. Next slide, please. This is the the keyword uh, I should use. Okay, which of these principles is not part of the Python Zen? And if you're wondering what the Python Zen is, just import this. Um, complex is better than dense. Errors should never pass silently. Now is better than ever. Explicit is better than implicit. This is a brilliant one. I really like this question. Uh, to whoever did it, well done. This is a tricky one, indeed. Yeah, I do. I think I do have my answer. Yeah, I think I do. Although this this is a tricky one. Yes. Um, Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, time over. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to go. Yes. I'm going to go with the first one. Yes, exactly. Because it, it's a different one. Um, complex is better than complicated. And I promise I'm going like really by memory. So I'm hoping I'm say I'm not saying rubbish, um, but I think it is. Uh, complex is better than complicated. Uh, that's the same in Python, and which makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, uh, I'm actually curious uh, to see how you get you get you you folks doing. Um, shall we have a look at the board in the meantime? Who's, who's scoring best? Who's in the top three? Oh, spam! Come on, we're spam here playing. Uh, we have a someone someone with a very 
Uh, oh, by the way, I am 19th. Oh my God, I'm. Am I appearing in the board as well? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's nice. I'm not working. Brilliant. Uh, okay, uh, brilliant. Um, okay, very nice indeed. Uh, to have uh, his playing. Oh, I'm. I'm. I'm absolutely curious to understand his playing here. Uh, there's me uh, as, as well, but I'm not playing really. Anyway, uh, that's very cool. Um, uh, well done um, to you guys. Um, brilliant. Uh, I, I guess we can move move on to the next question then, to, ne to the next game. Yes, please. Right. Which one of the following is not, and I repeat, is not a Python library or a module? This has been asked by Lorenzo, aka Green Key. Um, DeLorean, anti-gravity, SQLite emoji. That's a good one. And perhaps a tricky one. Not sure. Think carefully. Well, in the meantime, the other line that I'm wearing, this is a, this is a kind of a, you know, uh, some, uh, some, um, I'm very, uh, uh, passionate about this one. Uh, this is a, this is the lanyard from uh, Pykonov. I was it was hanging behind my door, and the cool thing about this is is that we ended up making. This was mostly uh, Mateo's doing. Uh, we ended up making the coolest badge ever, as in a floppy disk as a badge for the conference. I'm sure you cannot see it really, and it's completely broken, so it's not functioning at all. And we, I remember we, 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 we set up a context. I will tell you in the next question. It was really fun. Okay, so my guess would go for DeLorean. Uh, shall we get the, the correct answer? Oh, yeah, I, oh, I knew it. Yes, because probably, I have no clue, really. Is it, is it because the name of the Python library is different? That might be the question. Again, I'm playing like you guys, so I really have no idea why SQLite. Oh, yeah, probably is SQLite 3, isn't it? Might be, anyway. So, yeah, I would have done wrong. Happens. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, another coding thing. Uh, what is the result of the statement? This is again asked by Ernesto. Um, print a word of PyFest. It raises an exception, rises an exception. Uh, 33, 44, 53, or 304. Which one would you guess? I guess this is again, uh, you have to look carefully at the code. Block skip game. Oh, I finally see the timer running. It's in the very top if, you, if, you, if you're wondering. Sorry, my bad. I didn't see it. So clock sticking, time's almost over. Put the answer in. Right, I would go for A. It's rises in it rises an exception. Yeah. Okay. Well, so far I'm doing not that bad. I would expect much worse, I promise. <laughs> Depending also this very long day. Um nice. Um let's watch it now and then we'll have a look again at the board to see how you guys are doing. Okay, so, okay, so, oh, situation has changed, I guess. Um, we have, I guess, I guess the, the algorithm in the back end is also considering the time you, 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 you take to, to, uh, to send your answer. So um, we have a, a new second place, whereas first and the third place is still, is still the same. Brilliant, well done, you guys. Um, yes, can we can we go next to the next question? Um, I was wondering. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you the question then. Um, why a list cannot be used as a dictionary key? So, for example, if you have a dictionary like that, why you cannot do that? Uh, because it causes uh, uh, um, because it's immutable. Because lists are not hashable types. Actually, you can use list as dictionary key. So the, the question is wrong. And, and uh, of course, lists can contain different element types. 
So that's that's a very tricky one. Okay, time's over. Uh, I was thinking about it uh, because the the first and the second option made me think. Um, of course, you cannot. Of course, you cannot choose a list because it's mutable. Okay, the yeah, um, they are mutable, but because they're mutable, they're not hashable. In my opinion, it's the same thing. So, yeah. Uh, I would have gone with the second, though, yes, because they're not hashable. Uh, before we move to the next question, uh, I just wanted to tell you to finish the story about the, the linear and the floppy disk. So during PyConovit, which is exactly the, the, uh, the conference before the last we had in, in person, um, it was like uh, we had a bunch of, of floppy disks and we had some of them actually working. And uh, for those, so it was uh, there was a context during the three days of the conference. And uh, for those of you who wanted to play, that you can look for the actual. Uh, we had a, flo a floppy disk reader on the on the booth, uh, the registration desk, and uh, you can actually look for the functioning ones and get the 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 code to access the 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 the, the context and and play uh, the game. I, I guess it was very similar to the pub quiz we're doing here. Probably much more fun, I, I I'm, I'm sure. Uh, but I, I do really hope you're 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 enjoying this this uh, pop quiz with me, um, as I am. It's really fun. Um, uh, I would go to uh, the next question. In the meantime, I have no idea, and I'm, I'm actually talking to, well, um, what does uh, who has been the BDFL of Python? So BDFL stands for Benevolent Dictator for Life. Uh, Guido Rustum, Alan Turing. Uh, Ned Batch, uh, Batchelder, apologies, or Alex Martelli. I <laughs> hope that's nice. Um, in the meantime, asking to, uh, yes, I, I cannot see it. Uh, where I can see it? Uh, should I go? Should I, should I go on Twitch then? Oh yes, um, um, a question for you guys. Um, when you're done with when when you're done with the with the game, please 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 don't close your browser. Uh, just make a screenshot first, just to uh and, and let us know in Discord um that you 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 scored um whatever you scored. So like uh, you scored first, second, or or third. Uh, we do have three tickets again. So and those tickets will be will be uh, will be for next year's conference. And if you're thrilled, as I am, um, to know when the conference uh, will be next year, and spoiler alert, I do know already. Um, please uh, try to uh, stay with us till the very end, and, and to to get those tickets is going to be it's going to be really fun. And I'm I'm so very much looking forward to. Uh, to seeing this happening, really. Okay. Uh, well, I guess that this one was quite was quite easy, and Guido Verossi is is the correct answer. Yes, please. And um, uh, in, in short, if you don't know the history behind uh, BDFL, uh, so the Benevolent Dictator for Life, now actually Guido is not BDF, BDFL anymore. He resigned from the from the uh, uh, from uh, from being uh, the benevolent dictator of Python. The, the thing in short is, as you know, Python uh, improves um, um, uh, so um, improves the the features by what is called the PEP, so Python Announcement Proposal. And this is this idea is very brilliant. And you have to think that this was uh, created in a context in which most of the popular programming language were actually not open source. So, like the popular Java was 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 from a company. Sun back in the day was still open source, but the the evolution of the language was not community based. Um, C sharp was Microsoft, and so those were the days in which the changes to the language were not driven by the community. Python was one of the of the first having, to the best of my knowledge, of course, having this uh, community driven approach in evolution, 
And uh, this is the PEP, so Python Announcement Proposal. Everyone could write a PEP and then make the proposal to, uh, to uh, evolve and improve the language. And the BDFL had the very last say to saying, yes, this is interesting, this is not interesting, we can do this, we cannot do that, uh, so to say, in, in very short. So this was the trivia behind the BDFL. That was nice. Um, shall we go to the next question, please? Yes, please. Oh, that's nice. What was the first ever Python logo? A, B, C, D. Congratulations to whoever, whoever uh, um, came up with this question and also picked up those logos from, from the internet. Um, I do have my uh, I do have my answer, but there's still there's still time, so I won't I won't uh, say anything. Uh, again, uh, let me just remind you guys. Um, in the very end, when you, when you're done with the game, please don't close the browser. Make a screenshot of of your uh, ranking position of your results, so you can send us um, in in Discord. Brilliant. Okay, so my guess would go for B. That that would be the first. Uh, Python logo, in my humble opinion. Can we get the answer, please? Yes, I got it right. Well, so far, I'm not scoring that bad. That, that's very good. I, I really respect that, considering that um, it's so late at night. And I guess, as, as many of you, well, depending on where you're connecting, actually. So uh, here in the UK, it's 9.24 um, in the evening. Almost dark, not really. That's a good thing of being in the UK. This has been stinking hot today. Um, okay, shall we get the next question, please? How, how many do we have yet? Um, so which statement is, is used uh, to stop a loop? Return, stop, exit, or break? Um, be careful here, it's, it's a tricky question. The, the question is indeed specific to loops. Um, I can argue that some of them would interrupt the loops uh, 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 as well, but the, the question is really asking which of those statements is specifically supposed to be used when you have to break a loop. I probably say that. <laughs> that was really unintentional, I promise. Well, of course it's break. Can we get the answer, please? Yes. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I, I, I sort of uh, gave it away while I was saying that. Sorry, <laughs> that was really stupid. Um, OK, now uh, next question then. Yes. Which of the following is not a Python flavor? I am Python. I said I am. Uh, Jiten. Uh, P Python or Python XY? Oh, that's very tricky. And this, in case you, you don't you don't get it, it really refers to which language is used uh, to implement the Python interpreter, and so where the actual interpreter is running. This is a very nice and. Okay, time's over. I hope this was a, actually a tricky one. Um, I would go, so um, my personal, uh, hand, so I am Python to the best of my knowledge is, is, is going on .NET framework. So is the implementation of Python running on .NET. Jiten is of course in, in Java and PyPython is the only, is the only one not working. Um, Python X, XY though, I have no idea what it is. So I that that was be honestly saying that uh, that would have been my answer. So because I, I was I was fooled by the double P talking about PyPy, which is a brilliant project you have to definitely uh, look at. It's um, it's like the uh, Python interpreter written in Python itself. It's brilliant and it's mind blowing. Have a look at it. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, can we get the next question, please? So I'm scoring two wrong so far. Yes, please. 
when the Gita Varusum started developing uh, Python, okay, that is a tricky question. And don't cheat, don't go on Wikipedia, just make a guess. It's in December 1989, 1991, 1990, or mid 1989. Um, despite being older than Python, I have, have really no clue. This one, this one is, is, is difficult for me. I can't really remember. And it's very, it's very difficult for me to cheat because you will notice. So no. So I'm admittedly saying I have no idea. Uh, I guess it's it's started to the next one. Can we just get the the, the previous answer? Okay, so A was the correct answer for the previous one. Um, it already started the, the timer. Sorry for the for the blunder. So the very first version of Python was in 1991. What was the first version number? It's sort of related to the previous one. Is it 101, 0.9, 0.90, 0.910, 2.7? <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> what was the first version number of Python? What would it be? I would go for D. Is it? Yeah. Can we get the answer, please? Yes, I will get it. Not doing bad. I really have no idea. Um, can we get? Can we get? Have a look at the at the leaderboard, please. I'm really curious to see on um, how you folks are doing. Oh, spam is leading. Congrats and. Uh, um, Viperale is really behind, so it's it's a really one-one game here. But now, oh come on, Rin is third place. Okay, that's very nice. So, um, Paolo, you really have to tough up and back up and and try to get your ticket. It's going to be really fun. Um, can I ask, please, how many questions? If you know, how many questions do we have left? Sort of. I guess we, we, how many we've done so far? Okay, should be 10 ish, more or less. Brilliant. So get ready for the next one then. Um, next question Which rounding strategy does, oh, that's going to be cool. Which round, uh, round, rounding strategy does Python's built in round uses? This is a question, tough one. Uh, from Ernesto again, so you, you're gonna you, you're gonna thank him tomorrow. Uh, Randolph even Randolph hap Randolph away from zero Randolph down. Uh, you have to be really technical here, and and in in all truth, I can I I can say. Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, so. Ah, time's over. Uh, I would go for probably in the rush A, but I'm sure it's wrong. Can we get the, the, the correct answer? Or probably D. Which one? I don't know. Hey, oh my God. Yes, <laughs> it was completely tough luck. Um, really no idea. Um, I'm, 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 I'm earning my tickets. Come on. Very good. Um, uh, so, um, yes, can we add the next one? Oh, that's very nice. Very nice picture here. Uh, who of these people is not a member of the Python Software Foundations board? A, B, C, D. That's interesting to know and to find out. Um, I, 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 I would hardly say it's not currently a member of the Python Software Foundation board. Um, so make your educated guess. Is it A, B, C, or D? I guess if, you, if, you, if you've been with us so far, you probably have already your answer on some of them. Uh, so believe it or not, my answer will go for B. Can we get the correct answer? Yes, please. It is B. Yes. Sorry, his 
Guido is not part of the Python Software Foundation's board anymore. He resigned, as I told you. If you paid attention, you probably have guessed it, or you probably knew already, and um, I'm just saying uh, gibberish. Um, can we get the next one, please? Yes. Uh, oh, by the way, we need, we, okay. Which of these libraries is not a Postgres driver? Uh, this has been asked by uh, Paolo, who was also playing. This is this is strange. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't answer that if you if you're playing fairly. Um, otherwise, it seems like seems that like everything is bl bloated completely. Oh my god. Uh, at least use a different a different nickname for God's sake. Anyway, <laughs> basic rules of cheating, you know, different names, incognito. Anyway, no. So I would go for. Oh my God, I have no idea. I would go for D O C. Uh, yeah, I'm sure about B. I'm not sure at all about the the other ones. Yeah, D, D, D is completely gibberish. BGR, SQL. It's probably a driver from another language. I know. Um, OK, can we get the next question now? And then we have a look at the board again. Next question. Why the snippets is considered dangerous? OK, so, oh, yes, that's very cool. Is it because the list is empty or is it because whenever you call the function, the very same list object will be used or is it because an index error or it is because there is no issue? And so I'm asking the, the, the wrong question. Think about it carefully. is not as easy as you might think. And um, why do you think this function um, is considered? OK. Time's over. I hope you, you, you got it right. Uh, well, the the thing is that, um, uh, so in short, um, the answer will be B, in my opinion. Uh, first off, um, oh, yes, yes. First off, is really a bad idea to use mutable arguments as default parameters. Um, and, and second of all, uh, the evaluation of the signature of the function, so the, the head of the function, is actually uh, evaluated just once. And so the very same object will be used every time. So the very same list will be, will be used. And so this is, this is, this is considered really harmful. Uh, so that's why the, 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 the takeaway here is always using unmutable uh, default arguments. Uh, can we have a look at the other board now? I'm so curious to know how the cheating one is 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 going. Uh, and of course, I, I can say that. Oh, come on, it's second place. That's very cool. Everything is bloated. Yeah, come on, guys. So, so spam is leading. I have no clue who spam is. He is probably a fake account. He's probably someone in 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 the in the back playing, uh, knowing all the answers. Who knows? No I'm kidding. Of course. Um, can't win is actually almost winning. Um, so um, this time, uh, Viperale, please chaff up and uh, um, try to get your tickets. Um, uh, I can't remember really. Oh, David is playing. That's very cool. Uh, oh, a very good friend of mine there, uh, Inch, Inch Fremin. Uh, nice to see you here. That's very cool. Uh, and and. You're doing you're doing fine. You you should have been um um you 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 got you got scores in the meantime. That's very cool. Uh, congratulations to everybody who's playing. And as you can see, if you go very very to the very bottom of, of the ranking, there's my name there. That's that's a shame. That's really a shame. You know, guys, I'm not that bad. Anyway, I'm pro I'm probably am. Can can we go next to to, to the next question, please? Yes, thank you. OK, given the following Python code, def compose s blah, 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 you can read it. What's the result of the print statement? Type error, hello world, hello world with a uh, with no space, and index error, list index out of range. 
Hmm. Does not support item assignment. Hmm. Type error. I'm looking at it for the first time, as you as you can see. Um, Okay, that's that's very cool. Uh, well, I guess that's the, the, the only plausible one. Uh, despite these double quotes, which is kind of a strange one, I would go for A, that um, object screenshot does not supporting item. Yeah, that support item assignment. Um, that's because um, you cannot assign a single element to a string. Actually, you can get to see the element, but you cannot assign it. So that's that's a tricky that's the tricky part. I, I'm I'm reverse engineering the questions here, guys. So it's it's really on the fly, on the fly compilation, so to speak, so to speak. Um, and I'm, I, I told you I'm playing with you, so I am uh, like you, so. Good. Um, that was that was a difficult one. Probably the the, the most difficult so far. Um, um, oh yeah. So it's uh, you have to ignore the double quotes. I'm I can finally read the chat on on Twitch. Um, please ignore the double quotes. It's like um, blunder coming from um, string escaping. I'm sure. Uh, brilliant. Um, can we get the next question now? Yes, please. Next question. Which of these tools logo uh, from which we remove the name is not related at all with Python? Haha. <laughs> this is really cool. And oh, yes. Um, when we say related, I guess it means in a very uh, broad sense. Um, but uh, think of it in uh, how this might relate to libraries, frameworks, and time's almost over. I guess it's over now. Okay, I, I hope you put in the answers. There was a tricky one though. Uh, I'm sure you recognize the um, Anaconda, uh, which was B, and the Jupyter logo, uh, which was D. Uh, but so this, this leaves us to A and C. And of course, A is the wrong one uh, because the C one is actually cherry pie. That was, that was a tricky one. So, and the first one is uh, Magneto, which is not Python at all, by the way, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's not related to Python in any way. Um, good. Um, shall we get the next answer? I was, I was thinking of all the, Python trivia, but I cannot think of anything. Yes, please. Next question. Thank you. Uh, from which per version of Python was the assignment expression informally known as the war rust operator introduced? 2.7, 3.6, 3.8, 3.1. That's a very good one. And if you were like me in uh, Python DE a couple of years ago, um, we talked about it. So I probably gave it, give it away by saying it was not that long ago. On the Warus operator. Yeah, good time. So, yeah, I'm going to give you hints. It's not going to be Python two, right? Brilliant. Okay, I hope I hope you get it. It's Python three point eight. I'm I'm sure of it. Yeah, and uh, this is one of the things introduced in Python three point eight. And if you now ask me what has been also introduced in Python 3.8, uh, well, yes, I was going to say I cannot remember, but now I remembered the protocol uh, uh, has been introduced in Python 3.8. So if you, if you don't know what protocol is, check it out. It's real, super cool. It's structural typing, one of the coolest features introduced in Python 3.8, if you ask me. Uh, can we get the next question, please? Yes. 
Yes, so it, we're, we're getting there, really getting there. Which of these of new features is upcoming in Python 3.10? Very nice choice of questions to have a did it. Um, union operators, added to dictionary, a new module zone info, a new match statement, a new parser. If you just read the bloke posts coming around, uh, you, you might probably guess it. And in the meantime, just give, just, just let me get the chance to uh, to do a public shout out to all the all the folks into the Python um, Italia uh, organization who have been working very hard uh, to to make this happen. And um, uh, so it's it's really because of them that we're here today. We're having fun. And so thank you, thank you very much, guys. Um, Okay, so uh, which one would you say is the new feature? I'm going to go for uh, a new um, a new math statement. Um, is the answer? I was I was going to say the new parser. For some reason, I've read something about it, but probably I was wrong. No, well, um, evidently I was wrong. Uh, um, uh, the new math statement, which I know nothing about, so I will definitely check it out. Um, Oh, the matching statement. I get it. I get it. Yes, I read about it. I'm stupid. Sorry. Um, now remember. Yes, new matching statement. That's very cool. Um, can we get the next answer? And if I if I understood correctly, this is going to be three to the end. So almost there. Asked again by Lorenzo, which of these, uh, which is the result of this expression? S equal to one true and one point zero. He is very affectionate. Um, is very uh, passionate about floating point numbers. I know, is very fond of it. So, which is the the <laughs> the which is the the correct answer here? Is it A, B, C, or D? And remember, uh, we are going to create. Just understand what sort of object we are creating here, and then you get it. And you have to think of types. That's a very good question. I actually didn't expect that from Red No, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. You have to you have to you have to really understand what's going on here. Uh, and and I guess that the answer is oh, okay. We can be have B or D, but I would say oh mm, ha, huh, that's a tricky one. Is indeed C. Oh, that fooled me. Really? Oh, that's very cool, isn't it? Well, I, I, I have no problem saying that uh, one and true is indeed the very same object. I actually, oh yeah, of course, because the decimal part of one point zero is indeed one, so it is, is indeed the very same, the, the very same. And and for some reason, Python prefers integers over floating point numbers. Uh, so of course, S is a set object. So we're getting rid of all the, the uh, duplicates. Uh, th this is what's happening. Uh, and uh, one and true, as I said, is, is indeed the same object because in Python, um, true are uh, implemented as integers. Um, uh, and 1.0, of course, is the same as one. So yeah, C is a correct one. So oh, that fooled me, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I would have uh, saved wrong. Brilliant. Okay. So almost there. Let's get the second question and then we have a look at the board. As the best presenter would do in the TV. I, I'm not watching any TV actually. Uh, when you try to run Python scripts, a multi step process begins. In this process, the interpreter performs three steps ships off the code for execution, processes the statement of your script in a sequential fashion, and compiles the source code to an intermediate format known as bytecode. Identify the correct order of these steps. One, two, three, B, C, D. So uh, one, two, three, two, three, one. Let me say it again. Uh, processing the script in sequential fashion, ship off the code for execution, and compile the source code in intermediate format known as bytecode. Okay, brilliant. Okay, um, time's almost over. I would go, if you ask me, I would go for B. So process the script in sequential fashion, um compile the, oh well no probably compile well yes i would go for two three one that's my answer can I, can we get the correct one that's that was tricky 
Yes, of course. So script is processed sequential fashion, top to bottom, uh, is translated into bytecode, and then the, sh the code is shipped for execution in the very end. And if you if you want to know more about how this works, uh, you can actually have a look at how Python modules work. And, and, and so how the import statement is actually working and how Python makes sure that whenever you're importing the very same module in multiple uh, uh, or package in, in, in other Python files, uh, Python makes sure that you're actually importing the same bytecode or not, depending on if uh, something has happened. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't uh, credit the question. This, is, this was asked by a Nestor, very clever one. So far, very good, very good questions. Um, can, 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 can I get confirmation? Is this going to be the last question of the quiz? And I'm sure you're all, the last one, okay. Can we get a, a look at the, the, the board, please, before we end? So spam is leading. There's no, there's no way he, he will get away with it. Um, very well done to everybody played so far. Uh, I would say that it's it's all about second and third though, because yes, we everything can be decided here. Well, not really, I guess. Oh, uh, uh, that's no, that was not as expected. Uh, very well done to everybody playing actually. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not the last one for some reason uh, anymore. Um, because some, someone is loving me in the backhand. Um, and yes, okay, that's very cool. Uh, well, I guess I guess we probably know already the winners, but let, let's give it a go just for fun. Okay, can we get can we get the last question then? So okay, this is about data classes. From data classes you import data class, from typing into import optional, and you, you, you class what? A, B, A, D, B, C. Uh, which of these statements give um, error? Oh, that's cool. Um, what three none? What three none for none? What three or what three none or none? Hmm. All right. Uh, which one would give it an error? Um, Have a go for. I would say, I would say that the the C would give an error. Yes, is the only one you don't have values for. So, even if it's um, yes, exactly. So, in short, the trick here is that you have to differentiate from the typing from the actual default values. So optional is, is a short short end for union of the type you specified, in this case, ends and, and none. So, but it means that the the, the field D is, is indeed required. And, and, and also the order in which you specify those is important. You, you, have, you, you have to, you need to have the, uh, uh the parameters without uh so the name parameters first and then the the one the keyword arguments afterwards so in this case b and c uh so yeah so of course uh c is the wrong one there's there's very much to say about it actually brilliant okay so uh can we have a final look at the other at winners and and make a, a final shout out uh Yes, before we, we wrap up and we just say uh, goodbye. Okay, so it's Pam, uh, unexpectedly, I would say, uh, won the competition. Uh, very well done to uh, Viperale and uh, Poloxnet, who didn't even change the nickname, um, for scoring second and third to, to the leaderboard. Very well done to you guys. Um, and so the three winners here, uh, won uh, the three tickets uh, for the next year's conference. I'm pretty sure that some of those tickets will be given away uh, uh, later on. Um, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but uh, this was really lots of fun. Um, uh, I uh, okay. Um, so I, I'm basically.
and uh, yeah, so sorry, there's lots of people talking in my head, uh, and and not crazy, I promise. Um, it, it's like um, I've, I've been told that despite the nickname, um, can win probably could win something, um, which is probably uh, an extra ticket for for the fourth for the fourth place. Um, well. I think this is it. Uh, that was really fun. Uh, quite, uh, quite a very interesting uh, journey into Python um, quiz and and lots of stuff um, and history and trivia about Python. I hope you had fun uh, as I did uh, uh, presenting it um, during and uh, staying with you. Uh, I, I do really, really um, um, hope you you had. A very wonderful Thursday was a very great lineup for today. Wonderful talks, wonderful success story, an amazing uh, EMA session with um, Iwa and uh, Lorena earlier. That was really nice. Um, we're going to have um, a fantastic two days lined up for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Uh, everything is up online and you can check out the, the schedule. Of the, of the conference. Uh, okay, so I can see uh, Patrick here uh, has joined me. Um, Hello. Thank you very much um, for being here. Um, shall we say anything else before we uh, wrap up? Uh, just one thing. I just really thank you for joining at the very last moment. Because we, yeah, we had the technical issues we had to that change. And since, yeah, that was really good. Thank you. Um, and also want to thank uh, the people that have submitted the questions. because That was really helpful for us. Uh, and also everyone that's been organizing this event. There is me, Matteo, uh, Stefania. There's also Mark and Esther here, which are helping me doing this. It's been really, really good. Uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, people that have won, won the pub quiz, just send us a message, and we will contact them uh, to get the tickets for next year. And again, we, we're going to announce PyCon 2022 at the last day of PyFest. So make sure that you follow us. I mean, it's going to be on Twitter, but you know, PyFest is going to be quite cool anyway. So join us. And yeah, uh, we're going to start tomorrow with another uh, live coding. It's going to be a bit later than today. Uh, but yeah, to go to PyFest online and see all the, the amazing stuff that's going to happen tomorrow. And thanks for watching. It's been really fun. It's been very nice being here. Bye.